It isn't always easy keeping track of who the potential candidates are for our future king or queen. The line of succession will get even more complicated considering Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's new baby. So stick the kettle on and settle down as we're about to run through the full line of succession to the throne. Queen Elizabeth's record-breaking reign of over 65 years has meant we haven't had a new monarch for the best part of a lifetime. So who gets the throne if the Queen abdicates, retires or dies? Contrary to popular belief, the crown will not be placed on the head of the Queen's husband, Prince Philip. Instead, it will go to her eldest son, Prince Charles. At 70 years old, Charles stands as the longest serving heir in UK history, meaning he would also become the oldest ever British monarch to take the throne. Prince Charles could be king sooner than you think. Her Majesty is rumoured to have told her inner circle that if she is still on the throne at 95 years old, she will abdicate or give up the title of monarch and hand it directly to her son. The Queen is currently aged 92, so we're only a few years away. Once Prince Charles becomes the King, his second wife Camilla will be known as the Queen Consort, the title given to the wife of a reigning monarch. Next in line after the Prince of Wales is his eldest son, Prince William, commonly known as Wills by his family and friends. Since he was a little boy, Wills has always known he would one day become king. Having already been one of the most active royals in the public eye, some fans of the monarchy reckon Prince Charles should step aside to allow William to rule after the Queen. Last year we asked you who you want to take the throne next if you had the choice. More than half of you said you'd rather have Prince William as the next king. Unfortunately, it's not the place of mere subjects to decide on royal matters. But let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Three, Dad of three, William, has spoken of his reluctance to be king in the past and has said that he has no desire to climb the ladder of kingship before his time. When William does become king, he will have a huge coronation ceremony to honour the occasion, just like his grandmother the Queen did in 1953. Wife Kate Middleton will also have a ceremony of her own as the new Queen Consort. The Queen Consort isn't a ruler like the King, but she shares the same social rank as her husband. While not having any of the monarch's political or military powers, Kate will still have a huge influence on the public as Queen Consort, like the Queen Mother, who was greatly loved by the nation. So, where do Will's kids fit into all of this? Will we see the likes of cheeky chappy Prince George clad in shorts as our future king? Or could our monarchy be governed under the sassy rule of Princess Charlotte? And what about Prince Louis? Though, given that the little royal hasn't even celebrated his first birthday yet, he probably has little idea of what it would be like to celebrate his own coronation. George Alexander Louis is the first born child of Will and Kate, making him third in line to the throne at just five. He is currently a pupil at South London School St Thomas's Battersea and so his hands are pretty tied up with homework and back-to-back -back lessons at the moment. And it seems that his parents are more than happy to keep it that way, at least for now. According to a royal biographer, Kate and Wills have decided to delay telling their son that he is the future king. The family reportedly want to keep his childhood as normal as possible by keeping him blissfully unaware of his place in the monarchy. Prince William has previously said, there'll be a time and a place to bring George up and understand how he fits in in the world. We are very normal. 
He insists that all three of his children will grow up in a real living environment and not behind palace walls. Meanwhile, let's hope that George's playground pals don't let slip that he's third in line to the throne. After their father and older brother, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis would be fourth and fifth in line respectively. But it could have been different. Prior to 2011, Charlotte wouldn't have even had the chance at being monarch because she is a girl. The rules have changed significantly in recent years and previously daughters could only inherit the throne if there were no living sons. So Princess Charlotte would have lost her place in the queue, just like poor Princess Anne, who fell behind her younger brother Edward. Unfortunately, the rule still applies to children born before October 28, 2011. So bad luck, Anne. Edward will always be ahead of you, even though he's your little bro. You are watching The Sun on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for all the latest from the royal family and news videos from around the world. Let's face it, Charlotte was definitely born to be a queen in her own right and has already become a bit of an expert in perfecting the royal wave at just three years old. The toddler stole the show when she appeared on the Buckingham Palace balcony to celebrate her great-grandmother's birthday in the summer. She was seen excitedly waving at the thousands gathered outside the palace with two hands before realising her great-granny had a very different style. The mini-monarch was quick to get some tips from the Queen herself by copying her and using just the one hand to greet the cheering crowds. And let's not forget about the time when the young royal eagerly waved at the cameras as she was taken to hospital with Dad Prince William to meet her new brother Louis. Then just two, Charlotte appeared confident and at ease in front of the world's press. While it seems unlikely that Charlotte will ever have the chance to become queen with three people ahead of her in the line of succession, she may still one day get the chance to receive a special title which is given to the oldest daughter of the reigning monarch, the Princess Royal. Only one member of the royal family can hold the title at any given time. Currently, it belongs to Princess Anne. By this point, you're probably wondering, where is Prince Harry in the line to the throne? If it weren't for his niece and nephew, he would have been third. But he has now been bumped down to sixth place following the births of William's three children. And it may not stop there because if William or his children have kids of their own, poor Harry will fall further down the line. But it seems that Harry may not be as bothered as we think. The Prince has previously stated that no royal wants to be king or queen, but they would do it for the greater good. He told Newsweek magazine, We are not doing this for ourselves, but for the greater good of the people. Harry also said that even if he was king, he would still do his own shopping. He revealed he is determined to have a relatively normal life and if I am lucky enough to have children, they can have one too. And according to a royal biography, Harry's mother, the late Princess Diana, actually wanted Harry to be king instead of William. Some dribbling to want to. Harry's seeming ability to cope, his ease with people and general gusto led Diana to believe that he would handle being king more easily than William. She even called him Good King Harry. Apparently, Diana said, William doesn't want to be king and I worry about that. He doesn't want his every move watched. But with quite a few individuals in front of him in the line, it seems safe to say that Harry can carry on with his weekly food shop without any disturbance. The prince's first child with Meghan Markle is seventh in line to the throne, but it is unlikely they will ever be monarch, being so similar in age to William's three children who are ahead in the queue. The possibility of Harry becoming king begs the question, could Meghan Markle be his queen?
Technically, no. The tree only includes those actually born into the royal family and not those who marry into it. Sorry, Meghan, but you have more chance of playing the queen in a movie than you do of actually becoming queen herself. Tradition dictates that both Kate and Meghan are unofficial princesses, unlike princesses Beatrice and Eugenie, who, by the way, have also managed to bag a place in the line of succession at 9th and 10th respectively. By marriage, neither Kate or Meghan are entitled to the true title of princess, and it turns out, nor was Diana. So it looks like unofficial Princess Meghan will at least for now just have to settle with Duchess of Sussex, a title she received when she married Harry. The same happened to Kate, who became the Duchess of Cambridge when she married William. But it is important to note that though her own husband may never ascend the throne, this is not to say that Meghan's life won't be affected once her brother-in-law becomes head of the monarchy. Meghan has already made a huge impression on the royal family and particularly on the Queen herself. The Queen is apparently inspired by her granddaughter-in-law and is confident she will be a welcome breath of fresh air into the royal family. To many, Her Majesty's decision to allow Harry to marry Meghan shows how she is set on modernising the monarchy and adapting with the times. This wasn't always the case. Over eight years ago, the Queen's uncle, Edward VIII, was forced to abdicate when he was forbidden to marry his lover, Wallace Simpson, who, like Meghan, was American and divorced. Edward, besotted with his girlfriend, decided the throne was not worth the love of his life. You've been watching The Sun on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more royal content direct to your feed.